Hey folks, we're back with another video. Today I wanted to share with you guys some of the uh, top herbal medicines that I will recommend for patients with histamine intolerance um, and also mast cell activation syndrome. You know, whether they've come to me with that diagnosis or they're, whether I'm suspecting that their mast cells are a bit unstable. Um, you know, I'll frequently use uh, nutrients. That'll be another video. Herbal medicines, lifestyle, diet, uh, there's a bunch of things we can do to kind of stabilize these food reactions. Um, and then the most important thing, and I know I talk about it all the time, is finding the reason why, the root cause, and addressing it frequently. That's an overgrowth uh, in the body of some microbes. So I'm seeing a lot of fungal overgrowth, a lot of mold in the body, exposure to mold in the environment. Um, bacterial overgrowth like SIBO that can be a huge driver of histamine intolerance um, probably because they're uh, those overgrowths are kind of degrading those uh, brush border enzyme uh, production you know DAO diamine oxidase uh, so again that's a pretty strong link so why don't we jump into it we'll have a little look and don't forget that the link to this article is in the uh, description below all right here we go herbs Histamine intolerance and mast cell activation. Um, this is a beautiful photo of nigella sativa. I use a lot of nigella sativa black seed oil. Very, very potent herbal medicine. The most common um, symptom of histamine intolerance or histamine overload or issues breaking down histamine, um, you know, whatever that root cause is, would be either a runny nose. Uh, block sinuses, swollen turbinates, difficulty breathing through the nose. So a lot of patients that'll turn up with sinus congestion, chronic sinusitis, headaches above the eyes because of that congestion, um, dark bags under their eyes, sore lymph nodes under the ears, just right here if you just press that, hard sore lymph nodes, uh, sore throat, sometimes itchy eyes, red eyes, skin breakouts. Um, you know, when it gets really bad, and this is where I might start to be suspecting more of that kind of mast cell involvement, but you know, not always, could just be a histamine intolerance. I would see things like vertigo, dizziness, ear ringing, um, cardiac involvements, palpitations, arrhythmias, hypertension, gut, you know, histamine's definitely impacting the gut. The most significant symptom associated with histamine overload is nausea a nausea that can't be explained by anything else people have gone through all of these treatment uh, plans and, and they haven't gotten anywhere they haven't gotten any relief um, I'll, I'll be thinking uh, histamine overload so that's the background let's jump into the herbs that i'll use bacal skullcap for histamine intolerance I, I do use a lot of bacal skullcap this is a herb that comes from chinese medicine it is potently antiviral used a lot in kind of coughs and flu mixes pretty pretty potent uh, it's inflammation modulating meaning it's anti-inflammatory pretty potent anti-inflammatory it's antimicrobial so it can actually kill microbes uh, remodulate that and uh, rebalance that gut microbiome um, and it is a potent potent anti-allergy herb so bacal skullcap it's been shown to inhibit anaphylactic like reactions stabilize mast cells don't forget that mast cells degranulate to release histamine so this is an interesting little study right here and great little photo photos are really helpful it is a test tube study so we can't take too much from it we can build on our understanding um, it's taking a rat mast cell forcing it to degranulate up to kind of 90 percent of the histamine is released here right here um, so you can see that pretty clearly and then they are pre-treating it with bacal skull cap and adding it again and seeing that um, you know it was very very strongly stabilized kind of preventing that release um, in the human body mast cells degranulate contributing to that histamine load um, so stabilizing mast cells is a, a high priority 
So on to the next herb, we've got perilla for histamine intolerance. Perilla is this beautiful, beautiful herb, again, from uh, Chinese medicine. They've got a lot of beautiful kind of anti-allergy mast cell stabilizers. Um, this is the leaf. We, we make most of our own herbs here at uh, Byron Herbalist. Try and find the best quality herbs. And this is definitely the best quality perilla that I've ever seen. Comes from empirical health. Um, you can check them out if you're in Australia. They're just the best uh, quality Chinese herbs on the market, hands down. Uh, Perilla's got 270 different phytochemicals, so I'm sure there's a little bit of synergy or a lot of synergy. Um, they're all kind of working in concert to help stabilize uh, mast cells and um, you know reduce this histamine intolerance in patients. Get some really good results with Perilla. It tends to be very well tolerated. It's not a, a highly reactive herb. We have to watch out with that with sensitive patients. Um, and the big, big one here, and again, I'm sure there's a lot more going on, so we don't want to kind of put our blinders on, but uh, luteolin, it's a polyphenol flavonoid um, found in perilla. And, you know, they've isolated it and studied it, and they've shown that it was, um, it could inhibit pro-inflammatory messenger molecules. So again, his histamine would be one of them from human mast cells. So when we're looking at animal studies, we've seen that luteolin can reduce histamine release from mast cells. Um, and it has been, um, you know, particularly when they've been stimulated by a histamine liberator. So, you know, we're looking to kind of control these studies, stimulate mast cells to re release the histamine, give them a mast cell stabilizer like luteolin and see if there's any improvement, which, which we can see. On to nigella sativa for histamine intolerance. We've got black cumin or nigella, black seed oil. It's got a few different names. Um, when you extract it properly into a tincture, it comes out as this uh, quite kind of oily product. And we can see here that uh, a lot of the active constituents are found in the oil. So black seed oil, that's a uh, quite a popular uh, product. You can you can actually just purchase the uh, the fixed oil extract. So if we were talking about the volatile oil kind of component of nigella, we are looking mainly at thymoquinone. That's up to 30 to 48 percent of the kind of volatile oils, those kind of reactive oils in nigella, and it also contains thymol and cavacrol. So similar to oregano and thyme. Those are potent antimicrobials, use them all the time for gut infections. Um, nigella wouldn't be my first approach for uh, gut infections unless we're specifically talking about um, Helicobacter pylori in the stomach. But um, you know, it's definitely something to consider if your patient uh, or you are experiencing histamine intolerance and say SIBO, we might bring in nigella sativa and kind of hit two or three treatment aims in one go. Those top three would be where I'd start. So we got Baco skull cap, we've got Perilla, we've got Nigella Sativa. That's a nice kind of strong triplet. I wouldn't recommend using all three unless uh, you know we needed to to really kind of stabilize things. And you know, remembering that you know for most patients we're formulating like a custom formula. So. Obviously, there's other things going on. Maybe we're dealing with the overgrowth. Maybe we're using antimicrobials, and you know, maybe um, you know, a quarter or a half of the bottle initially might be to help stabilize and reduce that kind of histamine intolerance. Uh, you know, as a, as a therapeutic action. Um, if we're talking about some of the other ones, nettle leaf can be a pretty potent um, a herb for histamine intolerance. Wouldn't be the first one I'd go to, but the beautiful thing about nettle leaf is that you can bring it into your life in foods. So things like nettle soup, beautiful, so delicious, or these kind of nourishing herbal infusions which is basically a very, very, very strong tea. Um, nettle can be hard to drink for the, uh, the novice, um, you know, people who are just being introduced to herbal medicine. Um, but as you keep working with it, your body just recognizes how uh, valuable it is. It's just full of minerals, full of nutrients, full of vitamins, full of iron, and you know, the body just starts to appreciate it if you stick with it for a couple weeks. 
So if we're talking about mechanism of action with uh, nettle leaf, it has been shown to inhibit mast cell tryptase. So tryptase, A's, that generally refers to an enzyme, and this speeds up the breakdown of proteins. So in this process, it kind of regulates mast cell degranulation, um, and also it blocks COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes and can lower prostaglandin uh, you know, synthesis and release into the body. Um, definitely part of that kind of inflammatory cascade and you know, we don't have to go into the details, but on a 10,000 foot view, it can stabilize and block enzymes in those first few steps that lead to inflammation in the body. So if we're talking about herbs that can stabilize mast cells and kind of improve that histamine intolerance directly, that's where I would start. Any combo of those, depending on the patient, what they've worked with in the past, bringing in some nutrients, which we're gonna talk about in a different video, and then always remembering that we're treating the individual uh, holistically. I am always looking to improve the gut lining, and I am assuming for most patients with food intolerance symptoms, strong food intolerance symptoms, I'm assuming that we have leaky gut, and with histamine, I'm also kind of assuming that there is some form or some degree of leaky cells, all the way down to the cell. That's, that's important to kind of recognize. Um, so building up the gut lining, focusing on cellular repair and, and kind of supporting the cell wall with phospholipids. That's been really helpful for some patients. We can talk about that again in a different video and I'll be combining different herbs there. So again, demulcents, uh, you know, things like ribwort, things like marshmallow root, things like slippery elm, things like licorice, all of these beautiful herbs that can help kind of build up the, uh, the gut lining can be uh, an absolute game changer. Lastly, anti-inflammatories, just straight anti-inflammatories. So the two that I use frequently, and I use them a lot with my inflammatory bowel disease patients, I use uh, turmeric extracts, and I also use boswellia. They're, they're both pretty potent anti-inflammatories to start with. The list of herbal anti-inflammatories just never ends. It's longer than my arms. So starting there, Working down, um, you know, wormwood can be a big one as well. There's, there's, there's a bunch of other anti-inflammatories we can uh, turn to if we need to. So those are the herbs for histamine intolerance. In future videos, we're gonna talk about diets, low histamine diets. I generally find that that's a band-aid. It's not a root cause cure but it makes patients feel better, so that's helpful. And also nutrients. And just a little comment on the nutrients. I do find that the more I work with sensitive patients, the more I am turning towards nutrients and herbal extracts and kind of more of these kind of refined products, quercetin, luteolin, PEA, initially, because patients are so reactive and they have a lot of trouble with, uh, you know, food intolerances in general. Um, so kind of herbal medicine becomes uh, less of a viable option until you get them stable and then you can bring in the herbs to get that next leg of treatment uh, and treatment success. Like the video if you liked it and leave a comment and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.